Hello and welcome to another accounting tutorial where in this session I'll be taking you through a tax processes for business exam. Within this exam there are 80 marks on offer split over 8 tasks. So in order to achieve that pass you'll need 56 marks out of 80. If you do have any questions as you go through this video, be sure to drop them in the comments below. And remember, if you like the video, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Right then, let's get into it. Right then, so for those who are familiar with the AAT mocks, which I'm sure most of you are, this is our starting screen. So we get all the information for the assessment on here. As you can see, one hour and 30 minutes, which we've covered, eight tasks and 80 marks. So we should all be familiar with this. So moving on to task one. So task one is worth nine marks. It is about understanding and calculating UK tax law principles relating to VAT, registration and deregistration alongside special schemes. So as with your other AAT exams, for those who sat on the new syllabus and therefore the new test platform, we have the highlighter function on the right hand side which allows us to highlight text wherever we want to. However, what might be slightly different that you've not seen before is the references tab over here. So if we open this up, this is specific to your tax processes for business exam. And you'll see that down here we have our reference material that you will have available within your exam as well. So we can use this, particularly if you forgot anything throughout the exam, I would always make sure that you take a look in here because this is here to help you. So definitely worth using. Let's close that down for now, but I will show you at times where this can come in handy. Right then, let's make a start. This task contains part A through to D. A VAT registered trader sells an item to a VAT registered retailer for £1,500 plus VAT of £300. The retailer sells the item for £2,300 plus VAT of £460 to a non-VAT registered business. Complete the following statements. The VAT registered trader who sold the item for £1,500 plus VAT will include VAT of, and we've got a drop down here that we can select from, as a cost to its business. Now, as the seller is VAT registered, they would need to include VAT on the invoice. However, it's not asking how much is to be included on the invoice. It wants to know how much VAT it will include as a cost to its business. Well, even though you're charging the VAT on top of the amount, there would be no cost to the business. What they're effectively doing is saying that their goods are worth £1,500. We then have to charge VAT on top of those. However, when that is paid to the business, that is purely held until at which point they would complete their VAT return and that would just be passed across to HMRC. So there's no cost to the actual business. They're just holding that money until the VAT return will be completed and it will be passed across. So that would be zero. Next, the VAT registered trader who purchased the item for £1,500 plus VAT and sold the item for £2,300 plus VAT will include VAT of how much as a cost to its business. Again, a similar sort of principle would follow here from the first statement. When they're purchasing this item for £1,500 plus VAT, they would be able to claim the VAT back from HMRC on that purchase because they are a VAT registered trader. They would then charge the VAT on the sale that would be paid by the customer and that would then be passed across to HMRC. But there is no cost of charging that VAT to the business. So again, that would be zero. The last statement then says the non-VAT registered business who purchased the item for 2,300 plus VAT will include VAT of, 
and then we need to select again from our figures. So we need to calculate VAT on this £2,300. So to do that, I know we've got various methods that we can use. So it would be 20% of the 2,300. So 2,300 multiplied by 20% is £460. Now, because this business is a non-VAT registered business, they wouldn't be able to claim the input VAT back on this purchase. Therefore, it would be a cost to the business for purchasing this item. So therefore, it would be £460 as a cost to its business. If they could claim that back, then it would be the same as the first two statements, where the VAT would be classed as zero as a cost to the business. Okay, moving on to part B then. Identify which one of the following businesses may register voluntarily for VAT. So when you're walking through these, again, just be very careful of the wording because it is very specific here. It says which may voluntarily register for VAT. So we're discounting those who can't register for VAT and we're also discounting those who have to register for VAT. So let's look at each of the statements and decide which one is the most appropriate. A business providing services which are outside the scope of VAT with an annual turnover of 105,000. Now they are above the VAT threshold However, because they're providing services which are outside the scope of VAT, they wouldn't be allowed to register for VAT. So it wouldn't be that one. A business making wholly zero rated supplies with an annual turnover of £78,000. So these are below the VAT threshold. However, because they are making taxable supplies, so it states that they are wholly zero rated, which, although are charged at a zero rate of VAT, are classed as taxable, and with their annual turnover being below the VAT threshold, if they wanted to, they could register for VAT. They don't have to. However, it may be, particularly with zero rated supplies, it may be beneficial for that business to register for VAT. So that would be your correct option. We will, however, discount the bottom one as well. So it states a business making a mixture of standard rated and zero rated supplies. The annual turnover from standard rated supplies is 65,000 and from the zero rated supplies is 30,000. So in total, they're making 95,000 pounds worth of taxable supplies. And therefore, because that's over the VAT threshold, would need to register for VAT. So it definitely wouldn't be that one. As in this case, it's asking which business may register voluntarily. Well, because they're over the VAT threshold, they would actually have to. It wouldn't be voluntary, it would be mandatory. Now moving on to the VAT special schemes. So it says the following three businesses operate special VAT schemes. A Limited has been operating the cash accounting scheme for several years. B Limited is a limited cost business and registered for the VAT three months ago under the flat rate scheme. And C Limited has been operating the flat rate scheme for three years and is not a limited cost business. Identify whether the following statements about the three businesses are true or false. Now, I would say that we're coming up to a great moment here to examine the reference material. So say I got into my exam and I thought, right, I know about the flat rate scheme, but I forgot what a limited cost business is. Now it isn't guaranteed, but you would hope that within the reference material, there is something related to that limited cost business. So let's open that up and we can see here, we've got special accounting schemes for VAT. So you can open that up and we know, because it states here, that this is under the flat rate scheme. And you can see here as well, you can use the highlighter on this reference material as well. It will still work. We have a limited cost business. So it says goods cost less than either 2% of turnover or £1,000 a year. 
And at that point, the VAT will be charged at 16.5%. So we may be able to now use this to help answer the question. So just close that down for now. So it states for part C, identify whether the following statements about the three businesses are true or false. A Limited does not pay VAT to HMRC until money has been received from their customers. Well, that would be true. Remember, this is the cash accounting scheme that they're running. Now, under the cash accounting scheme, this is pretty much one of the main benefits is that you don't pay VAT Equally, you don't recover the VAT on purchases, but you don't pay VAT until your customers have actually paid you, rather than based upon the date of the invoice. So it is better from a cash flow perspective. So that would be true. Moving on to the next statement then, B Limited pays VAT on its gross turnover at a rate of 19%. Now, we've just been on that within the reference material, and it stated, if we scroll down, that a limited cost business, which is what B Limited is, would pay VAT at 16.5%. So we know that that one is false. Now, obviously, overall, it is better if you know all the information that's available to you, but that's obviously an ideal world. So we appreciate that that might not be the case which is why you have that reference material available that you can rely on if you need to. Right then, and lastly, C Limited has bought one item of equipment which includes £500 of VAT at the standard rate. C Limited can recover the input VAT paid. Now, although usually on the flat rate scheme you aren't able to claim any input VAT back, the rules are slightly different when purchasing capital expenditure. So any purchase over £2,000 plus VAT, you would be able to claim the input that back on that capital purchase. So for it to qualify, it must have at least £400 worth of VAT in order for you to be able to claim that back. Now in this example, it says, which includes 500 pounds of VAT at the standard rate. So therefore they could claim the input VAT back on this transaction. Moving on then, Daisy Properties PLC had been operating the annual accounting scheme for several years. Identify the date by which their return must be submitted for the year ending the 31st of March, 2021. When completing the date, you must enter the year in full. So under the annual accounting scheme, you're required to submit your return two months after your year end. So our year end here is the 31st of March, 2021. So therefore two months after would be May the 31st, 2021. Okay, now moving down to the last question. The taxable turnover for the next financial year ending the 31st of March 2022 is shown in the table below. Select the date that Daisy Properties PLC must withdraw from the annual accounting scheme. So under the annual accounting scheme, a business can have taxable turnover of up to 1.6 million before they have to leave. Once they go over that 1.6, they are required to leave at their year end date. So in this example, their year end date is the 31st of March, 2022. So they would have to leave because they've gone over the 1.6 million at their year end date, which is the 31st of March, 2022. So that covers our first task. So let's click answer there and move on to task two, which is worth eight marks. This task is about calculating and accounting for VAT and it contains parts A and B. TAS Limited is VAT registered and sells a mix of standard rated, reduced rated and zero rated supplies. Complete the table to show the VAT and net amounts for the following supplies. Round down your answers to the nearest penny. So we can see that we've got two supplies on here, some standard rate supplies and some reduced rate supplies. 
both at £420 gross or total as they're used here. They can be used interchangeably. So what we need to do is just work back from that gross figure of £420 to get the net amount for both the standard rated and reduced rated supplies and then the difference between the two will be our VAT. So there are multiple methods of doing this, however, the correct or recommended method that you are supposed to use is to take your gross amount, so we've got here 420. What we would do is because standard rate is at 20%, we would do 420 divided by 120 times by 100. And the reason we do that is because the gross amount is effectively 120% of the net. So to work backwards from that, we would divide by 120 times by 100, and that would give us the net amount. So if we just do that, that gives us 350. And then the difference between the total and the net amount would be your VAT, which would be 70. Right then, moving on to the reduced rate supply. So reduced rate VAT is at 5%. So following the same technique as we did for the standard rated supply, we would take the 420, we would divide it by 105 and multiply by 100. So effectively under the reduced rate, that 420 as the gross is 105% of the net amount. So to work backwards, as I said, you would divide it by 105 and multiply it by 100. And that gives us a net amount of 400 pounds. The difference between the two would then be your VAT, which would be 20. Moving down then, TAS Limited offers a customer a prompt payment discount if payment is received within seven days. The customer is not VAT registered. Identify the effect on VAT of the customer taking advantage of the prompt payment discount. Now because prompt payment discount, or you might have seen it as settlement discount, it's the same thing, is calculated on the gross amount on the invoice and then taken off if it's taken, like in this question here. Therefore, if the customer were to actually take that discount, it would decrease the entire amount of the invoice, including the VAT element. So therefore, if they were to take the prompt payment discount, the VAT would decrease. Right, moving down. Taz Limited made the following sale on the 23rd of May 2021. Standard rate goods for £120 plus VAT of £24 and then zero rated goods for £96. The customer has requested an invoice from Taz Limited. Taz Limited issues a simplified invoice to the customer. Identify which one of the following amounts must appear on the simplified invoice issued to the customer. Well, on a simplified invoice, you don't have to split every item out. However, you do need to include the total amount, including VAT. If for whatever reason you weren't too sure on this, again, it is something that you can find within the reference material. But because we need to include the total amount, including VAT, we do the 120, so let's just highlight these. We'd have to do the 120 plus VAT of 24 plus the zero rated goods of 96. And if we add all those together, that would come to 240. And that is what we need to show on the simplified invoice. Fantastic. Right, okay, moving on to the last one then. Let's clear those highlights. Select the latest date that TAS Limited must issue an invoice to the customer. When completing the date, you must enter the year in full. So, in terms of working out this, someone has 30 days to issue an invoice, including the date of sale. So we need to calculate 30 days starting from the 23rd of May 
including the 23rd of May. So we need to count 30 days from that point, including the day itself. So if we bring up the calendar, so double click, and we want to calculate 30 days from the 23rd of May. So if we add these on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's June, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So it would be the 21st of June. Yes, it is a sort of simplistic way of doing that, but honestly, it's the way I would do it in the exam. I mean, don't talk out loud in the middle of your exam. That's a sure fire way to get kicked out. But in your head, just count through the calendar and um, it is probably the most simplistic, although the best way to make sure you don't miss a day. I would also do it twice as well. <laughs> if you think that you've uh, overcounted or undercounted or missed a day at some point, so. And then the year, it's 2021, this date. Here we go, 23rd of May, 2021. So we can type that in. Fantastic, and that covers task two. So we can click answer and move on to task three. So on to task three then, which is worth 12 marks. And this task is about the recovery of input tax. This task contains parts A through to D. Part A then, complete the following statements. Residual input tax is input tax incurred on purchases and expenses on, and then we have some options. So we've got taxable supplies only, exempt supplies only, and both taxable and exempt supplies. So residual input tax is incurred on both taxable and exempt supplies. So this relates to partial exemption, where you might have input tax from something such as rent, where you can claim the tax back, but it may relate to an area of the building that produces both taxable and exempt supplies. Moving on to statement two, if a partially exempt VAT registered business exceeds the de minimis limit, the business can recover, and we've got options of all input tax, no input tax, or a restricted amount of input tax. So if a business does exceed the de minimis limit, they can have a restricted amount of input tax. Now I don't want to go into too much detail here because it's almost a lesson in itself. The business would calculate the percentage of goods that related to taxable supplies and the percentage of goods that related to exempt supplies and it would then calculate based on that percentage how much of its input tax it could claim back where you've got an expense that related to both taxable and exempt supplies. So just as a really simple example, let's say you had input tax of £1,000 and the business made 40% exempt supplies and 60% taxable supplies. What they're saying is, in that scenario, you would be able to claim 60% of that input tax back because 60% of your supplies relate to taxable supplies, 40% are exempt. So you'd be able to claim 60% of the input tax back. We're not going to go into any more detail than that. And truthfully, for your exam, you, you don't really need to know anything more than that. Um, and there is a little bit in, in the reference material that you can look at for partially exempt supplies. Moving on then, High Life Limited is a VAT registered business and has incurred the expenditure, including VAT, at standard rate, shown below in the last month. B then, identify whether High Life Limited can recover the input tax or the input tax is blocked for each expenditure incurred. So the first one then, hospitality provided to an overseas customer from Italy. Well, because it's to a overseas customer, we are able to recover the input tax if it was local. So within the UK, you wouldn't be able to, but because it's an overseas customer, we can. A lunch provided to a former employee. As this wouldn't be a business expense, you cannot claim the input VAT back, so that would be blocked. 
an evening meal provided to an employee. So if it is an employee and not a customer, you are able to claim the input tax back on that. Attending a sporting event with a client from the UK. Now, because this is a UK based client and not an overseas client, you wouldn't be able to claim the input tax back. If, a bit like the first one really, it was an overseas client, then you would be able to. However, because it is a local client from the UK, you aren't able to recover that input tax. Moving down then, the accountant of High Life Limited has carried out a review of aged receivables at the end of the financial year to the 31st of March 2022 and identified some bad debts. High Life Limited does not operate any special VAT schemes. All supplies are standard rated. Identify whether they are eligible for bad debt relief or not eligible for bad debt relief. And secondly, calculate the amount of bad debt relief available and round down figures to the nearest penny. If your answer is zero, then enter zero. So the first one then, Purple Limited has total debts of £5,598, all of which are over six months old. So that's a good start. A bad debt provision has been made. Okay, so for this one, we were off to a good start because the debts are over six months old. However, in order to be eligible for bad debt relief, the business has to write off the amount as bad debt within the accounts. So therefore, as they've only made a bad debt provision, which is saying that they might not be able to recover this amount, it wouldn't be eligible for bad debt relief because they need to physically write that off and say that we will no longer receive that within their accounts. So that would be, double click these, not eligible for bad debt relief. And therefore the amount would be zero. And make sure you follow the format that it's asked you to write that in within the question. Pink Limited disputed an invoice totaling £498 and was invoiced in June 2021. So bear in mind, we're working on the year end 31st of March 2022. And this is the point at which we're calculating this. So we're definitely over the six months overdue point. So again, good start. It then says the amount has been written off in the VAT account. So because this debt is over six months overdue and has been written off, they would be eligible for bad debt relief. So now we just need to calculate the value. So it says that the invoice totaled 498 pounds. So because that is the total, we need to calculate the VAT amount. So. To do that, again, various ways that you can do it. I would divide by 120 to get what is effectively 1% and then multiply by 20. So if you remember in task two, I believe, we did it before where we divided by 120, multiply by 100 to get the net amount. Well, because we want the VAT amount, we divide by 120 and multiply by 20. So that will be 498, because that is the total, divided by 120 times 20 equals 83 pounds. So we just need to enter in 83. There we go. Okay, moving down. High Life Limited received an invoice from a supplier totaling 1,200 pounds, including VAT at standard rate. The supplier offered High Life Limited a 3% prompt payment discount if payment was received within seven days. High Life took advantage of the prompt payment discount. Part D then, calculate the amount that High Life Limited can recover as input tax. Round down to the nearest penny. So because prompt payment discount is calculated on the gross amount, the first thing that we need to do is 1,200 pounds, because that is including VAT, and we need to find 3% of that figure. So we do 1,200 divided by 100 to get 
and multiplied by 3 to get 3%. So the amount of prompt payment discount is £36. So what we now need to do is take that £36 off the 1,200. So we do 1,200 minus 36, which gives us a new gross amount or new total amount of £1,164. So from there, because we're now trying to calculate the tax on that amount, what we'd need to do is very similar to what we did before within the bad debt relief question, we just need to find the VAT amount now of that 1,164. So we do divide by 120 and multiplied by 20, which gives us VAT of £194. So High Life Limited could recover £194. So it's worth saying that prior to the prompt payment discount, the total of the invoice was £1,200, including VAT. So without any prompt payment discount, they'd have been able to claim back the full 200. However, because they've taken that prompt payment discount, that has reduced the total amount on the invoice that they need to pay, and in turn would also reduce the amount of input VAT that they could claim, because it's reduced, as part of that, the tax on the invoice. So rather than it being £200 that it would have been originally, because they've taken that, it's been reduced down to 194 and that covers task three. Let's now click answer and move on to task four. Right then, moving on to task four, which is worth eight marks. It is about preparing, calculating and adjusting information for VAT returns. This task contains parts A through to C. Jazz is an accounting technician who works for a firm of accountants. Jazz is working on the VAT return for the Salt Design Company for the quarter ended the 30th of September 2021. Jazz is working on the VAT return for the Salt Design Company for the quarter ended the 30th of September 2021. The Salt Design Company is eligible for the cash accounting scheme and the VAT return is completed using a software package which is compatible with making tax digital. Jazz has entered a payment to a supplier totaling £529.20, including VAT at standard rate. The software has calculated the VAT as £88.20, whereas the supporting invoice shows VAT as £25.20. Part A then, identify the reason for the difference by completing the following statements. The invoice is, and we need to select between correct or incorrect. Well, the easiest way to determine that would be actually calculating the VAT on that invoice. So to do that, follow the same technique as we've been doing so far. So that would be 52920, which is the gross amount on the invoice, divided by 120 times by 20, which gives us £88.20. So the software has calculated it correct However, the invoice has calculated it incorrect. So the invoice is incorrect. And it says VAT has been included at, and we've got the option of reduced rate, standard rate, or zero rate. Well, it's certainly not zero rate because if it was zero rate, there'd be no VAT at all. We certainly know that it's not standard rate either because we've just calculated the standard rate to be 88 pounds 20. So it must be reduced rate. However, we can double check that if we want to by doing £529.20 divided by 105 and multiplied by 5. So if we do that now, that gives us £25.20. So VAT has been included at the reduced rate. Moving on then to part 2. Identify one corrective action that Jazz should take. So we've got the following options. Change the figure in the software to agree with the invoice. Definitely don't want to be doing that because if the VAT should have included standard rate VAT, then we don't want to reduce the amount on the software because the software was correct, so it wouldn't be that one. Next one down, contact the Salt Design Company to ask them to 
investigate with the supplier. So that certainly sounds like a more viable option because we would need them to change the amount on the invoice. So that, that would make perfect sense. But we'll just have a look at the third one as well. Use the figure in the software and take no further action. We definitely don't want to do that. We need the amount on the invoice to match with what's in the software. So it would be option number two. Next on the list then, the Salt Design Company invoiced a customer for £1,500 plus VAT at standard rate on the 1st of August 2021. The customer paid for half of the invoice on the 15th of September 2021 and the remainder was still outstanding on the 30th of September 2021. Part B then, calculate the amount of output tax relating to the above transaction that will be included in the VAT return for the Salt Design Company for the quarter ended the 30th of September 2021. Enter your answer to the nearest whole pound. Now, the important part about this, and this is why you need to read the question very carefully, is at the top it states that the Salt Design Company is eligible for cash accounting and the VAT return is completed using a software package which is compatible for making tax digital. So because they're on the cash accounting scheme, they would only have to pay the output tax over and would only claim input tax that has been actually either paid by the business or paid to the business. So in this example, it says the customer has paid for half of the invoice, but the remaining was still outstanding. So we would only include, because of that, half of the actual VAT on the invoice, because that is the only amount that has been paid. So first calculate the total amount of VAT, which with it being 1500 plus VAT, 20% of 1500 would be 300 pounds. Half of that would obviously be 150. So the amount of VAT that they would need to include within the return would be 150. It's worth noting that if they weren't on the cash accounting scheme, they would still include actually the full 300, but because they are on the cash accounting scheme, they only include the amount that has actually physically been paid to them, which in this example would be 150. Moving down then to the last question, Jazz has noticed that the bank reconciliation for the Salt Design Company was not completed for the previous quarter to the 30th of June 2021. He has identified four transactions that need to be posted in the accounting software. Part C then, calculate the changes that need to be made to the figures for output tax and input tax for each transaction. Round down your answers to the nearest penny. If there is no change, enter 0, 0.00 and ensure you enter a figure into every box. Do not leave any blank cells. So basically we need to look through each transaction and see what effect it would have on output tax or input tax. So the first transaction was on the 4th of April 2021 and it says payment to a supplier totaling £90.24. The supporting documentation shows VAT at standard rate. Okay, so because this is a payment to a supplier, remember this is a cash accounting scheme, so what we would need to do is we would need to include that amount within our input tax so that we could claim that back. So the £90.24 is the gross amount, so it says the payment to the supplier totaling £90.24, so that would be the gross or total, so we need to calculate the VAT included within that amount. So we know how to do that now, it would be £90.24 divided by 120 and times by 20, which gives us £15.04. So remember in the question it says do not leave any boxes blank, so in the output tax we need to enter 0, 0.00 and in the input tax we've just calculated that we can claim £15.04 back. Moving on to the second transaction, on the 10th of May 2021, amount paid to HMRC for the VAT for the quarter ended the 31st of March 2021. 
So this is just a payment to HMRC, paying across the VAT owed. There would not be any sort of additional tax on top of that. It is just paying the amount that we owed to HMRC. So that would be zero in both boxes. Next on the list then, 28th of May, 2021. Proceeds from the sale of a computer for 300 pounds. The Salt Design Company had claimed VAT on the original purchase. So therefore, if they claimed the VAT on the original purchase, they would then need to charge VAT on the proceeds or on the sale. Now that 300 pounds would be the gross amount or total amount. So there would be VAT included within that amount that we would have to pay across to HMRC. So to calculate that, again, use the same method, 300 divided by 120 and multiplied by 20, which gives us 50 pounds. It's worth noting as well, by the way, if you have your own methods of calculating VAT as part of a gross amount, you might divide by six. I know that's a common one. You are more than welcome to keep doing that. I'm just using the official method that they recommend you use but feel free to use your own methods. Okay, and then on the last one, 1st of June, 2021, a direct debit for the payment of electricity for £262.50. The supporting documentation shows VAT at 5%. So we'd be able to claim back 5% included within that payment of electricity of £262.50. So again, that is the total amount. So we need to calculate the 5% as part of that figure. So to do that, we do £262.50 divided by 105 and multiplied by 5 to get the VAT amount. And that gives us £12.50 that we could recover. So enter that in and that finishes this task. That will also finish part one of this video. I really do hope you found this first section useful. And if you have, please remember to watch part two as well. And uh, drop it a thumbs up again if you've liked it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching part one. I will see you in part two.